welcome to Find How's uh, Houston been treating you? So I love Houston. Um, I think I've been here before. I don't recall, but I believe I've been here. Uh, like in this hotel, that is. I've been in Houston probably this is my third time in Houston. Um, but yeah, this hotel feels familiar. Like even walking through, I feel like 192. It might have been here or somewhere else. Yeah. So I'm just deja vu. I think was that when Rashad fought. Ryan Bader, maybe? No, DC for oh, Gustafson. Yeah, Gustafson. Yes, yeah. the same card. Um, mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts uh, a couple days out before this rematch? It's like your second straight rematch, if I remember correctly. So thoughts on the, the rematch, Ed? Um, same thing I said in Fire Island, just practicing patience. Uh, just practicing patience because, you know, you don't want to get excited too quickly, uh, if you will. So, yeah, um, the moments will come tomorrow at the press conference, at the weigh-ins, and at the fight night, but I'll just ride the waves. He was in here earlier, and I'm sure you've seen all his interviews. And he's nope. using, he's <laughs> I mean, maybe you've maybe people have brought them up, but he's yep. <laughs> he's using words little like, clips on Instagram. He's using words like he wasn't satisfied, like he wants to feel satisfaction in this fight, win or lose. He's happier now. Uh, he's mentally in a better place after being uh, burnt out for so for so long. So, what do you make of his mindset from what you've heard or seen? Um, I mean, you know. There's no secret that we don't like each other, um, and there's no need for it. There's no need for us to like each other, but I do empathize with what he said. Um, who brought this up to me? I can't remember. I think I saw it on Instagram. He talked about his his um, his dark place he went to after the last time I beat him. Uh, you know, I've been there in my own, everyone's been there in their own personal way, so I understand and I empathize when you don't want to get up and all that stuff and you lose motivation, so... Yeah, I'm glad he's pulled himself out of it. I'm glad he's feeling much better. He's a better man, better fighter, better all that. So, yeah, um, take him to the dark place again. He also said uh, his phrasing was he had to come to grips with the title when he had it because he wasn't chasing anything. He liked the progression up the rankings, but once he got the belt, uh, it wasn't. Maybe he lost a little bit of the the chase. Have you felt that at all? Never, I never. Um, even. You know, it's news now. I just signed a new crazy deal with the UFC. Um, and Tim, or was it Jeff that was asking me uh, for the docker yesterday? It was like, how do you feel? Are you excited? And like, I could see it's a big deal. It's a fucking big deal. And Eugene was, you know, ecstatic. You could see even he got emotional. Tim felt the same way. But I was kind of like, it hasn't hit me yet. Because if I was... Um, if I, if I was going to, if this was about money, if I was going to just do this for the money and bounce, I would have done this like maybe three fights ago, to be honest, because I'm, I'm kind of set. I have one of the smartest men with money behind me who's, you know, helping me flip my money the smart way. But it's not, the, it's not about money. This is, I love money. Don't get me wrong. I do this for the money. But it's not about money. This is about legacy. This is about martial arts. This is about learning. And, yeah, I haven't lost that step. I'm still hungry. You know, I'm 32, I'm fresh, I'm young. And I keep saying this week, I've got the, the training camp, I went back to the young Izzy, the kid that was just soaking everything up and just be real curious, like, how does that work? Ooh, let me try that, and I'll do it, I'll do it the next day, and I'll be successful at it. Or if I fail, I'll try it again. So, yeah, I haven't lost that step. I never did. What do you make of what the, the rest of the division happening right now? As the top, everyone's gunning for you. Sean Strickland just kind of threw his name into the title picture after his last performance. You got Cannoneer and Brunson fighting below you. So what do you make of this, the, top, the rest of the division below you? Mm, I like what I see. I like what I see. And I hope, um, I mean, I, I don't mind doing another rematch if, you know, Brunson does well this weekend in a crazy way. But, yeah, I hope I get some new meat, some new blood, because I like fresh blood. But at the same time, I still get up for these, because rematches like this, there's too much on the line for myself that I put that pressure on myself that I make sure... I can't lose, and he can't win. You also have a couple teammates on the card, Blood Diamond and Carlos Alberg. I think the first time I spoke to them was before your Paulo Costa fight. Then he even signed to the UFC, and oh, yeah. they were kind of uh, shadowing you and kind of taking it all in. So how had that shirt on last time? Uh, the That's someone two else. press conferences. Ago, I see. I okay, yeah, 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 a bit. Uh, so what's it been like seeing them, uh, their journey progress to the UFC now? Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, for Blood Diamond, it's time. It's time, and. Even Eugene said something in an interview. I read a headline on Twitter. Um, he said, like, where Diamond is right now in his MMA career, um, compared to mine, he is further ahead, and he's right. You know, Diamond is just a guy that I, I can't wait to see or hear what the commentating booth says when he's, um, 
you know, expressing himself, how they're trying to break it down, because he's, he's a crazy dude. I mean, his name, nickname's Blood Diamond Boy. At the gym, we call him Black Jelly for a reason. He's, yeah, he moves in different ways. And finally, unrelated to this fight, I think in August you were really, you tweeted you were excited about the new Rick and Morty season. Did you catch up? Not yet. Is it out? Yeah, it's all on Hulu now. Oh, Hulu. We don't have Hulu in New Zealand. Sorry, we've got to wait till it's on Netflix or it's on the, on the dark web so we can pirate that. Yo, ho, ho. <laughs> Easy. I saw Eugene did an interview the other day where he felt like the UFC haven't really promoted you as well as they could have. But So is it nice to get this new deal that shows not about the money, but that they do, they do value you and they do want to promote you? 100%. That's the thing. The uh, thing I want to know is what's my value to the company? You know, uh, I, you can't undersell my value if you are. You're kidding yourself, you know. Um, I bring so many different looks to this company. I, I, even without trying, I'm Nigerian. I've brought that whole nation. Um, me and the Three Kings, you know, the continent of Africa is on our back. Um, I wear it on my chest. We have the Oceania region looking at us. I'm a guy who crosses over into the mainstream so easily, you know, and I have this appeal that I know I've, I've got that it thing. So I'm glad that the UFC is starting to see that. They've already known that. They've known this for since the jump. Dana knew this since the jump. But, um, yeah, I'm just the guy who deals with my dealings with the UFC behind the scenes. And I'm glad we came to an agreement um, with this new deal. And I look forward to, you know, this, this effect trickling down to the rest of the, the fighters is there something motivating about rematches where the fighter you're facing, like Rob, for example, he's going to assume that the night he fought you was the worst performance he could give, so he can only get better. Is there something motivating to you that, well, not only do I get to fight him again, but I get to show him that actually he can not do any better against me? Exactly. But I recall, I'm going to say I'm the elephant in the room, I never forget. He said, I felt great. After the last fight, he said, I felt great. This is the best I've ever felt, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, I'm glad he said that. I'm glad he didn't make any excuses. And from what I've heard now, it's like, I think Twist was saying, have you seen the interviews? I was like, nah. He's like, he's still a bit salty. I was like, huh, interesting. And I just left it at that. But um, yeah, I, I just, from what I've seen on Instagram, he just feels like sometimes he battles with himself with accepting it. Like sometimes he accepts it, and then sometimes he's just like, ah, I hate to admit it, but he's right. I saw that on one of the clips on Instagram. He said, oh, I hate to admit it, but he's right. But I'm like, bro, you should have listened to me in 2019 when I called it as it was. People thought I was talking shit. But no, nah, I was just speaking the truth. He wasn't acting himself. He was acting out of character. And I'm glad he's accepted that now. So, yeah, that makes him dangerous to me. That makes him really dangerous. But at the same time, same, same, but different. Is that something that's important to a fighter, that they have to accept a loss to be able to benefit from it and grow from it, right? Yeah, look at me and Jan. After I that's lost exactly that fight, I was just like, cool. I'm, any loss I've ever had, it doesn't, I don't, you don't take, I don't, I'm not too attached to the outcome. I'm getting better at that as I get older. I'm never too attached to the outcome. Even when I fought him last time, bro, if I had lost that fight, ha! Like, I would have been the laughing stock of the internet. Like, look at this guy. He thought he was so cool with all that dancing shit. And he got knocked out. Ha <laughs> ha. Fuck this guy. But nah, I put that shit on myself because I like to gamble. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a gambler. I like to roll the dice. You only have one life. So I put that on myself so I can exceed expectations, you know? And yeah, he, um, you just have to accept it. Like, I, 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 the, the Yan fight, when that happened, I was kind of like, oh, cool. All right, what's next? I, I never get attached to the outcome. It's all about the, the present and the journey and just being myself and being in the present. Thank you. Izzy over here. Um, do you feel like uh, this rebuild that he's had, this reinvention, everybody's saying that he's better than he ever was, do you think that that's totally warranted? Do you feel like part of it is just because you made him look the way he did and he's just always been this good? Yeah, I think he's a good fighter. He's a, he's a good fighter. Um, and I think he has gotten better. I'd be lying if I said he hasn't. But, you know, uh, who was I? I saw on Twitter again. I have a lot of time during fight week, so I'm scrolling a lot. But I saw, I think, we, it was a Luke Thomas, yes, morning combat. They were saying, like, um, we, pretty much we know this. In MMA, we have recency bias. You know, you guys remember from the y'all fight, oh, my God, this was so boring. No, he just runs away. And I was like, oh, really? Watch this. So, yeah, um, they just forget. You know, Rob, he's a good fighter. He's had a lot of knockouts in the past. He, he's gotten better, but I just don't think the... <laughs> it warrants that kind of reaction. But I have high standards, let's just put it that way. And then the fight between uh, Derek and Jared, is there any sort of way that you're kind of leaning in that one? Is there someone you think will be on the other side of this for you? Nope. 
I just hope the best man wins and wins in uh, wins in an emphatic fashion. Yeah. Thanks. Easy. Hey, is he down here to your left? Uh, to your le- right? Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, shit. Uh, My right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the other left. Uh, <laughs> Rob has said in a couple of interviews that he actually has not watched the last fight at all. <gasps> has not watched it. What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. That's a good question. What are my thoughts on him not watching the last fight? Mm, I'm sure his coaches have. I haven't watched it in a while. Last time I watched it would have been August during the lockdown in New Zealand. Um, I might have posted it on my stories when I was watching it. Um, what are my thoughts on it? Uh, good for him. Maybe it's just maybe it's a psychological thing. He doesn't want to see that be replayed in his head over and over again. But I mean, there's a reason I brought my high top fade back. I have to remind him, you know, I had the low Caesar for a while for the Costa fight and the Victoria fight, but I brought the high top fade back just to remind him. So when he steps um, across the cage from me, deja vu. Any other things you'll do the same as, as the first fight? Little little dance at the beginning? Everyone asked that. That only worked because it was a surprise. That worked because of the impact of that moment. And it was just like, you, I caught everyone off guard. That's why it had an impact, but... Like I said, I'm feeling like Fire Island on this fight. I remember I was feeling dark. I said that, and I was like, I, I just want to go in there and handle business, so I'm going to do just that, assassinate. You said that uh, the new contract with the UFC is a, a crazy deal. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how nope. crazy it is? Nope. It's, I, I, I'm honestly... It's between us. Uh, who's watching? Yeah, no exactly. one's watching, yeah. Um, where's, my, where's my babysitter? Is he around? Nah, I can't say shit, but um, yeah. Uh, it's Look... I love the UFC. I've, I've looked at this company and I've wanted to be in this company for so long. And I, I love the fact that we've gotten to this agreement finally. Side note, I just signed for this fight, this actual bout this week. So, yeah, let you know how deep we went. But I'm glad we came to this agreement. I'm glad we have a good working relationship. And like I said, with everything that's happening right now, this will trickle down to the rest of the fighters. And it's only going to be great for the company. It's only going to be great for the company. But, yeah, just give it time. Is that what you meant uh, when when the fight got announced that you you put Cal? I just didn't like the way. I mean, when I asked the next day, I was like, "Did you did you guys see the announcement?" They're like, "What announcement?" No one saw the announcement. I'm like, "Bro, this is not how you announce a fight of this magnitude." And that was because yeah, we're, do, we're doing some dealings in the in the back at the moment. So I just felt like the 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 people doing that bit of the USC dropped the ball. You you make a little teaser trailer, you know, and then you have Rogan, Anik, and DC riff about it right after the trailer before the main event. That's how you. Do I have to do your job for you? I can do it on my phone. I can make it, like, literally. I can chop it up real quick. But, yeah. So I was just like, the fuck? What kind of announcement is that? Just a little banner, like, okay, that's it. Like, no, you don't do that for a championship fight of this magnitude when it's in Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? There's, a, there's better ways to do that. So that, that was me expressing myself with a little cap emoji. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Right here, is he? Um, in the post-fight interview of your first fight with Whitaker, mm-hmm. you talked about how you basically saw he did exactly what you and your team thought he would. I'm just wondering, as you head into this fight a couple days from now, are you expecting a different Robert Whitaker than you fought in 2019? Yep, I am. Um, he has matured, um, like he said, and I expect him to be more patient. But guess what? <clears throat> sorry, oh, every time. <laughs> sorry, guys. sorry, not sorry, but so am I. I will be patient. Um, I've got the belt. He wants the belt. Come get the belt. I don't have to do shit. I just have to wait for him to do work because I'm the one with the belt. But, you know, this could be me just telling fibs as well. I might have my own secret plans that I want to do. But, yeah, I, he's going to come different. He's not going to do what he did the first time because he'd be silly to do so. Like, uh, the same shots I caught him with um, in the first fight. Leading up to the knockout, I was already catching him with it from the first round. Uh, check, right hook, all that stuff. I've been catching people with it in training. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but I've got, I've got three ways I can win this fight. The left hand has found its mark a lot in mm. the last fights as well. I find that's not something that's talked about a lot, but you go back and look at your last three finishes, I believe it is. Mm. Uh, that left hand has found its mark every time. It's right there. I mean, this is – I'm glad you're saying all this because this is coming from – when I came into the UFC, everyone was like, oh, he has no knockout power. You know, he's just too skinny. But then, yeah, I'm finding ways to put people away with these, these lanky limbs. Um, yeah, but I have other ways to finish fights. This is MMA. This is why I came into this game. 
because I didn't want some nerd in pajamas with a blue belt to be able to beat me up as a kickboxer. So I humbled myself and I, I learned the game of grappling, jujitsu, wrestling, um, judo, sambo, you know, all that stuff. So I can be a full-fledged, actualized fighter. Hi, Izzy, over here. Um, Hands up? Yeah. Just so I can see. Yeah, there we go. You have one of the best nicknames in MMA, the last style bender. Appreciate After, it. Uh, you know, you're obviously an av avatar in this state, you know, uh, but however, if you had to choose one element between air, water, uh, and fire, what would it be to me, um, if I had to choose one, uh, why you got to do this to me? Probably... God, I'm the avatar. I can't, I can't, oh, but if I had to pick one, which tribe I was from, or what element, fuck, how, how much time do you have? Don't you have Toph tattooed? I know, I want to say Earth, but I, I just, I'm, I know, okay, I know, but Earth, I'm a water sign, by the way, that's my fucking retrograde, get a grade, all that stuff, but yeah, um, Earth, okay, well, let's go with Earth. Uh -huh. And then you did some voice acting work in Baki, Baki. yeah. Uh, would you... If they ever make a, like, yes. another avatar, would you be interested in voice acting a, a character from there? Yes, 100%. That's, I mean, this is just, MMA fighting is just, you know, one aspect of my life that I can't do forever. Eventually, you're going to hear me on Disney. You're going to hear me on um, Pixar. You're going to hear me probably in the Avatar series. You'll see me in the cameo and some other stuff. I was meant to be in a really big movie that was coming out, that was being filmed in... Last year, last year after my last fight, but I didn't have an O visa. You needed one of those to film, and there's all these logistics. But yeah, like I said, I cross over very well into the mainstream, very well. So after my fighting career is done, look for Freestyle Bender on YouTube to blow up crazy, and also you'll see me in video games and animations. Mm -hmm. And if they had to make a movie about you, whether it's anime or live action, mm -hmm. which actor would you like to play as yourself? Uh, which actor? Uh, Pete Davidson. <laughs> nice, thank you. Is he answer. just over here, man? Yeah, what's up? Uh, Connor recently tweeted saying you're one of the last remaining high-level fighters in the roster. I was just wondering, what does that mean to you hearing that from someone like Connor? Um, you know, real recognize real. He's um, we're on the same team when it comes to Paradigm. You know, G Pizzle. Um, yeah. I think I'm second place now when it comes to highest paid fighter on the roster. And yeah, well, active right now. But um, Connor is a guy that I've, I've admired from the jump, from the jump when he fought Marcus Brimage. And he's a guy that he's a performer. So when he said perform, I know what he means. We know, like, you don't just go in there and fight, you perform. Look at the last fight with Whitaker. That was a fucking rock star concert. Like, you know, I gave a song and dance, the whole thing, shining. So, yeah, we understand the, the magnitude of stepping up in the main event, not just showing off, but showing out. So, yeah, I appreciate Connor and I appreciate what he's done for the game because whether you like him or not, he fucking raised the bar. He raised the bar for everyone, even you guys in here. Like, the whole game is better because of him. Ronda Rousey did that as well in her time. Um, but, yeah, Connor's definitely set the bar. And I look to do the same before I'm done with this game. Lastly, from me, I'm not sure if you got to see what Sean Strickland said, but I just wanted to read it. Nope. Well, can I read it and get your thoughts? Okay. Um, if Izzy beats Whitaker, he's walked through all of the top five. Let's get some fresh blood. I'm the one, dude. I'm the Huckleberry. Let's go. What's Huckleberry? I, have, I don't know. It sounds funny. <laughs> Is that his cousin? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, huh, Huckleberry. Um... Yeah, I do. I like fresh meat. I like fresh blood. And we'll see. We'll see after this weekend. I got to see what, you know, Bumson and uh, Cannoneer do this weekend. And we'll, yeah, we'll see. I do like, I like, that's going to make a lot of money if me and him actually get to fight. Trust. Because I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a troll, but I like, I keep it on the wraps. But yeah, um, if that happens, it happens. But we'll see after this weekend. Is he one more uh, quick and down for cool. you? Uh, you obviously, a lot of anime fans uh, gravitate towards you, but Roxanne Modafari is retiring this week, and after her 50th fight, I just want to hear your thoughts on, on her as a fighter and her uh, career. Like, Roxanne is the happy warrior. She is, she's one of those people, she's just a gem, and I've met her a few times, and she was in my locker room 
Uh, I can't remember, either for New York or for the Tough 27 finale. Um, I'm glad I met her. She's a gem. She's such a pure soul. And you can, who doesn't like Roxanne Mataferi? If you don't, fuck you. <laughs> Honestly, if anyone ever says, oh, I don't like her because I'm like, fuck you. You're an asshole because she's such a, a purist of this game. She embodies the meaning of a martial artist, someone who, you know, she's not the most athletically gifted. She's not the, you know, you won't say she's the, you know, craziest athlete or craziest fighter, but as a martial artist, she is fine. She is finesse and she does a great job at it. So, and also one thing I, I know is that she's one of the, I think I read this somewhere, someone said she's one of the last of the OGs for, for women's MMA. One of the girls that started you know, in women's MMA and still doing it, kind of like, um, I don't know, like a Randy Couture was, you know, in his heyday. Um, but yeah, uh, she'll be missed. And I'm going to keep up with her and her antics on Instagram. Um, yeah, she's fun to watch. She's an anime lover. And I just like, uh, she, if you see Roxanne, you know, you just, you just, she's a happy warrior. So yeah, I, I respect her and I love what she does. And um, yeah, I hope she has a well. She has a tough opponent ahead of her with King Casey, but I hope she has a good outing before her retirement. And yeah, she deserves it. She deserves to ride to the sunset and have the UFC look after her after this fight. It's also her 50th fight. Could you see yourself reaching 50? Bruh, I've had over 100 fights in, in fighting. So, um, hmm, what am I right now? I'm, nah, probably not. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> probably not. Um, I, yeah, I'm just. Uh, my God, I'm, I'm young. I got other things to do, man. I, you know, fighting is only part of my life, so I'm not going to be here um, being that guy trying to fight for you know, some money at 45 or whatever. I'm going to be in here. I'm still fresh, have my wits about me. I'm making my goddamn money, catching bags, and I'm getting the fuck out. Izzy, Eugene arrived early on Tuesday morning because he wanted to spend a little bit longer in New Zealand with the border issues. What does it mean to you for the sacrifices that him and the rest of your team have made to be here? You guys don't understand, man. Like, no, I understand. Oh, you? Oh, no, you do. I'm yes, locked out. Oh, my bad. Fuck. Yeah. My um, yeah. Like uh, before, um, I think we've kind of opened the borders later on now. I think in March or something. I don't keep up with the whole games. I'm. The rules don't apply to me. But yeah, that's how I think. It might be my ego, but whatever, fuck it. But before we left on this trip, we had no idea when we were going to come back. And Eugene has a newborn son. Um, all my coaches, most of them have kids. You know, they, they were prepared to leave their kids and their family behind and just be away for possibly six months. You never know with this whole shit. There might be a new variant. Deceptatrons. Oh, now nah, everyone locked out. Shut the world down. So they were prepared to do that. And like my teammate said, uh, Dan said when he fought in Vegas, burn the boats because I ain't coming home. They were prepared to do that. And that to me speaks volumes. Speaks volumes to the character of my team, to the character of the people we have um, backing us because they believe in what we're doing and the work we're putting in. This is bigger than us, man. This is, right now we're in this as um, not just even New Zealand MMA, Oceania MMA, even with Rob as well, you know, what he's done, you know, from tough nationals to being a middleweight champion. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. And right now we're in this, so we don't really see the value of what we're doing. I do, but they don't. But one day when it's all said and done, they're going to look back and be like, wow, we did this shit. Not just me, not just Rob, all of us, the teammates, our coaches, and we're going to... The sacrifices we're making right now is for the greater good and for the next generation of fighters that we have coming up because we got some killers coming up. So, yeah, we're prepared to make those sacrifices. And I'm glad I have a team who is self, selfless enough to, to make those sacrifices regard, regardless of the, the implications. So, yeah, it means that we're, I get chills thinking about it because it's, it's, man, it's, it's hard for someone to do, man. I know how much Eugene loves his family. I know how much that man loves his family. So... Yeah, um, I'm blessed to have the team. We're blessed to have the team that we have. And what does it mean for you to be here as part of the Three Kings with your brothers from Aotearoa? Will you get to see some of their fights? Oh, 100%. I'm going there to watch Diamond's fight first of the night. I'm not missing that for the world. You can't pay me to miss that. I want to see Black Jelly live. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I want to see the Black Jack do his thing as well, redeem himself, because I know what he can do. So, yeah, I'll do that. Pop back home, because I, I don't think I make it here till 9 o'clock. So, yeah, I'll do that and then come in and clock in. Hey, Izzy, over here. Uh, Coach Eugene talked about how he's lost a bit of respect for the whole Dagestani group. Um, really? 
he did in, a, in an interview, just because he feels like they've lost their way, especially after that Dan Hooker fight. Um, oh, yeah, Makachev. What, what, do you, what, what do you think about that? Wait, what did he say exactly? Uh, he just feels like they're talking a lot more than before and instead of just fighting. Uh, I don't know. You have to ask Eugene. I think I kind of know what he means. I, maybe because, you know, you know how they do. They just go in there and smash, go in there and smash. But I don't know. I've, I haven't really noticed anything, so you have to ask him.